Welcome to Pro Tools Audio Loop Arranging. This is an example of the type of song you're going to create. Firstly, go up to the File menu, choose New Session, create a blank session, audio fi file type is WAVE, bit depth 16, 44.1 sample, and use your last input output settings. I'm going to save this folder to the, my desktop. You'll probably have another location where you would like to save your work. Once you've located that, give the folder a name, in this case, Audio Loop Arranging, so this, that's the name of the session, and then save. This could come up with almost any window. Under the Pro Tools menu, go to Window and Edit, and that way you can see the complete session. Over here, we've got uh, the ability to adjust what's on the uh, transport bar. In this case here, Reduce it all back to minimal and then activate zoom and transport. Also close off the track list. And then we for keep the regions open. Then we're going to come across to the rulers and go with the, just the main ruler only to start with. And then activate the markers and the tempo. And this should clean up your desktop considerably. We're going to keep the regions open so that we can see a lot more of the audio loops as we bring them in. First we go up to the grid menu and activate that, then the smart tool menu, then the uh, counter, we want bars and beats, and then we want to show the sub counter and make that into minutes and seconds. And then we're going to activate the grid and also set our quantize value or snap value to eighth notes. Also we're going to change the tempo, so double click on that red dot and type in 110, 110. Select OK. Now under the window menu we're going to open our workspace. and This is a browser and we need to navigate to where our resources are kept. In this case here I'm looking for my Term 1 audio loops, and that's where they're located. I double clicked on them to open them up, and by selecting each individually, we can preview. Now these are all their actual tempos. We have the Elastic Audio tool here, which will now make the loops play back at their original or at the project session tempo, which is 120 beats per minute. Turning it on and turning it off again. So we'll just close off that other workspace and we'll just resize our desktop a little bit so that we can get to our workspace easily. Now we're going to preview some of the drum tracks. This is verse 1, and then there's a verse 2 track doesn't have a crash symbol at the start. And I think I'll go with the first one with the crash symbol at the beginning. And you can see the location that it's going to place it. Don't import the tempo. You can see the length of the region there. But because we've got Elastic Audio activated, it automatically matches to the tempo of the session. Went up to the region menu, selected region looping, and we're going to loop it twice. Play it back, and we've got a lovely little loop. Now we're going to bring in a, or audition a chorus pattern. Got a bit of a ride symbol going. There seems to be two crashes there, so I think I'll just go with the first one. Easy rock drums. And I'm going to put it on the same track and then just nudge it over with the grabber tool. And now went to the region menu, selected looping, and I'll make two loops. And there it is. And if I play it, you can hear that transition. Now, over here, the regions, you can see that it's added a whole list of what the loops are that we've placed in. In this case here, the synth bass, 
as we place that into the session, it's going to appear over here on the regions area. And then I'll let go, and there it is. Just been added. And I'm going to loop it, so I go to region, loop, and this time I'll make it that it loops four times. I'm going to bring in another sound. I think I'll preview one of the guitars. Probably at this stage I'll start off with the first guitar because that's nice and funky. So I'll drag that in and place it at measure two. I wanted it at measure two because then way I can have an introduction. and activate region loop, and we'll make that one four as well. And we'll play it back and have a listen. If you listen closely, the two loops are uh, not exactly in tune. They're, they're close, but we'll explore that in a moment. There's another loop that we're going to add now, which is the other guitar part. And rather than put that at the beginning, oops, so one, we're going to put it at the start of the chorus. Place it just there. And that's added to our region area as well. If I play it back from here. Now clearly that was uh, rather loud. So we'll rename the tracks first. And this should help us when we want to adjust the track volumes. So we'll make the first track drums. Second one, synth bass, that's pretty self-evident. We'll make it guitar funk. And then the next track, we'll just make the guitar hmm, heavy, I suppose. That'll do. Now, as the track was rather loud, set up a loop play. Like seven and eight. I held down the control key as I clicked on the play. And the loop function came up. Go to the mixer. And now we adjust the volumes for the various tracks. And that's about right. I might just adjust this one a little bit more. And I'll go back to the edit window. Now we're going to look at each of the region's elastic property settings. And we go to region, then elastic properties. And you'll notice that the synth bass has no pitch shift at the moment. And that happens to be in the key of A minor. This guitar funk is in the key of D minor. So they're related. However, they sound a little bit off key. So we click on pitch shift. And to match the keys, we have to go minus five semitones down from D to A minor. In this case here, this is in E. So rather than going down, we're going to go up five semitones to get it to A minor. Now when we press play, you can hear that they're actually making a bit of sense. Although the guitar heavy is dropping down in pitch, which is a bit of a nuisance. Firstly though, we'll, we're going to fix up the, um, put in a chord change, instead of all being in the same key and a little bit monotonous. We've selected the region, and now we're going to go separate the region here for the synth bass and guitar funk. Now, I'm just going to select using the grabber tool here at the bottom, and we're going to change this original key up five semitones, making it go into the chord of D. Now, the original key of this was D, so we just have to type zero, so there's no longer any pitch shift, and let's have a listen to it. So that's pretty nifty. We're now going to change the key. You can hear the guitar dropping away there. So we're going to shorten this. 
so that we just keep it all in the same key of E and then we're going to loop it. So we've got it selected, go to region and select loop and we'll have probably four. And that will take us to the end of our short little example. Now it's just looping on, which is good. We can also put in some additional key shifts. So to measure seven, I've selected the three tracks and we're going to go to separate region at the selection and it does it all in one nice big hit. And we'll do another one straight after it. A little bit difficult to select there. So we'll get, start from the bottom corner using the selection tool, highlight it, and then edit separate region at selection. Now individually we need to go through again and this time we're going to make it a 4-5 progression so D minor to E and then back to A. So this has to go up to plus 5 as it was before and now it's going to go up to plus 7. So D minor to E for the bass. The original key of this was D so we make it zero semitones, pitch shift, and to get up to E we have to make it plus two. So it's just two semitones higher than its original progression. For the guitar heavy we actually had to put it up five semitones so we're going to drop it back two semitones from its original. Oh, I lied. Minus seven. <laughs> and now we're going to go back to Zero. And that sounds a little bit groovier. Now we'll solo the drum track because we want to have a bit of a listen to it and create an introduction. And I want to isolate a snare beat. So I'll solo the drum part and I'm just going to select the eighth note here starting on the fourth pulse of the bar and we'll separate the region at selection hold down the option key and drag it across or the alt key and just place it here and likewise do another drag copy option and just drag it across let's have a listen to it now so we've got all quavers there but that doesn't sound as effective as that what I'm after so I'm going to change the snap value to 16th notes and zoom in a little bit and we'll make it a touch shorter so it's now going to be a 16th note. Delete off that one and then hold down the option key and just drag them across and now we've got three and and then four semi quavers after that. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. We can see the rest of the song now. Now we probably want to put in a drum fill just there. And now I've done it using the same technique. And we're at the end of the song now. It would make a lot of sense to have a strong beat on the first pulse of the bar. So I'm going to grab the crash cymbal from over here. And we'll go up to the Edit. This time I just used the shortcut menu which was uh, Command E. Now I've dragged it across using the option. I'm locating now just the first part of the downbeat of the bass. Likewise using option E, little shortcut there. And now I need a downbeat of the tonic, the root note. And again option E just to separate that region and drag it across. Let's have a listen to it now. See it a bit clearer. And here there's a little bit of a clipping there at the end. So we're going to do a little crossfade at the end of each of them. Just by hovering up in that top right hand corner. Play it again. And that fades out nicely. On your audio loop disc there's a whole lot of samples. So go through those and start assembling your own song. Thank you.